How many people want to hear a powerful testimony? Amen. Pastor Ralph, Pastor Diane, come on up. Hallelujah. Hey, everybody knows, right? I think everybody knows because you've been praying and we've been feeling it. But my daughter, five weeks ago, found out she had a rare type cancer in the abdomen. And uh, they, they got it out of there in a box type way. Uh, they didn't know it was cancer and it went all through her system. And but we got a big butt. Come on, baby. But, big but, today, you know, following the lead of the Holy Spirit is very important. My son-in-law, uh, he says, what He says, what, what must I do? And he got on the Internet, and he found out what was the best cancer hospital in the entire country, maybe the world, and it was MD Anderson. And they did a number of this similar type cancer, so... They went over there, and they got a, a, a diagnosis that said that we're going to have to attack this with the world's, they called it the world's strongest chemo. And she'd have to move over there for four and a half months so they could observe her because it could make her lose her mind. And they would have to, you know, but that, that was the only treatment for this particular rare type. So reluctantly, they said, okay, we're going to do it. Now, we had lots of prayer out. Okay? All right, watch the, what happened today. They went back over there. She was in the room. They're getting ready to put the double ports in. And she's waiting on it. The person in front of her just got his. And here comes the nurse and a doctor push open the door. And they say, hold up, hold up. There's been a change in the prognosis. Hey, enter them. Enter them, right, baby? I'm going to give, Diane will finish this off, but just little details. The, uh, we were in prayer from 1130 to 1230 here today. And, you know, a number of the staff and others are in here. And uh, Donna came by me, I was in the back, and she started praying praying over me for peace. Now, the reason I needed peace, because I knew what was, was happening. But she not only prayed for my peace, but she prayed for the family's peace. And I felt the peace of God come over me. You know why? Because there was something getting ready to happen, and God wanted me to have peace before the word came to us. He wanted us to celebrate before. And I, I felt, I said, you know, but Pastor Tony comes out a few minutes, and, there, and he takes over, uh, and he's praying. Uh, uh, Ruth just got through praying. Then Pastor Tony, I believe you picked it up, and he prayed for the church and all of you guys and your marriages and everything, right? There's nothing that's not covered here. <laughs> Amen. Then he got, he, he just right out of the blue, he says, and Shelby, that's my daughter's name, has been, and he says, amongst other things, he called this thing done. Watch this. Here's the exciting part. I had my phone laying face up, silent, and I looked over and I saw a text message. I looked at a text message. It was 1157. And my son-in-law has sent the text. They just stopped the procedure. I don't know what that means. He says, I'll let you know when it, it happens. So I sat there, you know, and Pastor Tony finished his prayer. But exact same time that came through. I just, it's very important. Because, listen, hearing God and in your prayers, I mean, he might not have, he just, you know, needed to do it. You know, But listen, when God quickened us. We need to follow through with it. Because my son-in-law would not have gone over there. Here's what happened. The pathology report 
that they've had for five weeks, the pathologists were studying over it and trying to grow this thing and all, and they said they made a mistake. It wasn't the kind that would be treated with that chemo, that world's strongest chemo, but only with surgery. So now it's, they had a name. They did the surgery. Here's the point. So when the doctor comes out and says, hey, we did, you know, here's it. Chemo or radiation will not touch the stuff that she's got. It's very rare. Only surgery. Good news is, everybody knows, we already had the surgery. It's a cat. They took a CAT scan. And they found, they said, we can't find any sign of cancer. <laughs> number, number two, they had, they, they, the doctor says, we, we treat this, this situations like this all the time. To give you an order of how big this place is, MD Anderson, it's probably 10 times bigger than Moffitt. It's 15 stories tall, and it's huge. They said the place where you get the chemo is bigger, way bigger than our auditorium here. Just, it's just like machine. But they do a good job. But if, if Jason and Shelby hadn't uh, went there, that pathologist, the, the local doctor, wouldn't have done all that. They'd have been treating her for nothing, and all they'd have done was deteriorate her, you know, because it was the strongest stuff, and you could only get it one time in a series in your lifetime. So it was 47 years old. That's a pretty tough thing. So is that, is that pretty much enough? Watch this. One more thing. The doctors come in and they verify her doctors and Jason reads something my daughter wrote and the doctors started crying. Both two doctors started crying. They said, listen, when y'all came here a few weeks ago and you said that, or, or, or he, Jason told him, says, listen, we believe, we, we believe pragmatically that doctors are needed, medicine's needed, you know, this equipment's needed, but we are believers in God and believe that miracles can happen. And they said, we, we, we believe that too. We'll believe that with you. And so when it happened, here's what the doctor says. We just never saw it happen before. But today, so they're coming back tomorrow. Canceled their apartment. We serve an awesome God. I believe, I believe there's a song I believe there's a song. We serve an awesome God. Right. And it's so amazing to be a part of the body of Christ. Each one of you, each member, your supply was a supply of Jesus on the inside of you that came out and it healed our daughter. And we thank you and we thank God. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. That hospital is in Houston, Texas. My God. Woo. Glory. Yes. Yes. Man, we can go home on that. <laughs> but it's raining, so let me get you all a little bit. Let's go to uh, Psalms 92. Uh, 
When you get there, say, I'm there. Let's take a look at verse number 13. Actually, verse 12. I'm going to read 12 to 15. It says, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in the old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. I want to minister uh, tonight on relationship, the glue that keeps it all together. Relationship, the glue that keeps it all together. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you tonight for the awesome uh, testimony um, of Shelby, Father God. And just we just praise you for that, Father God. And thank you for that right now, God. And Father God, I pray tonight, Lord God, that you will give me the words of wisdom, words of knowledge, words of understanding, Father, that you will give me utterance to open my mouth boldly and speak as you would have me to speak. Lord, I pray uh, tonight that your people hear your voice in my voice, Father God. Use the word tonight to speak into people's lives, speak into their circumstances. Lord, let it not just be information, but let it be an impartation of your spirit, Father God, so that your people can be not only hearers, but doers of the word. So, Father God, I, this is something that needs to be uh, caught. I'm going to teach it, but let them catch it, Father God, in the spirit. And, Father God, let them walk in it, Father. So, Father God, I just thank you for it now. In Jesus' mighty name, if you believe it, say amen. amen. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. You know, one of the things we've been working on in the church is how do we keep up with the people that come to the church? You know, people come, visitors come, people join the church, and, and as the church grows, we need, we, um, we're putting together a team to actually keep up with people because sometimes people can be here, uh, not here one a couple of weeks, and then it's like, where's, what's her name in them at? And it's like, we got to, like, reach out to them. But um, one of the things I was praying, I was like, Lord, it's got to be deeper than that. The connection to the church has got to be greater than a phone call. Your connection to what God is doing and God's placing you in the kingdom of God, in the body of Christ, your connection has got to be greater. Now, it might start off like that, but God wants us to grow into this thing where our relationship with him is actually the thing that uh, keeps us uh, sticking to this thing. I begin to realize that one of the most important things that I could minister is, is to uh, encourage believers to cultivate a relationship with the Lord himself. It's not about um, uh, uh, falling in love with your favorite preacher. You know, I began to think back of when I got saved, and I kind of praise God the way I got saved. I got saved in a jail cell. There was no preacher. There was no choir. There was no praise team. There was just a man that was in a desperate situation that called from the depths of his soul out to the God of the universe because I realized that God was the only one that could save me in my current situation. And I'm glad it started like that because that's the foundation that my Christianity is built on. It's a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So you don't really have to call me. You don't really have to uh, give me a pat on the back. It's my relationship with God that has kept me all these years, through seasons of trials, through seasons of, um, of, of not being noticed, through seasons of seeing people get what you're believing for. It was my relationship with God that see me through those seasons that made no sense. And if you don't learn to cultivate a relationship with the person, the, the person of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit of God on planet Earth, the devil will send trials in your life and you'll be a Christian that never stays planted in the house of God long enough to produce fruit in their lives. It's amazing how people join the kingdom of God and you can see what God is doing. He's taking them through a process and then they let various trials and tribulations come in their life and knock them out of the plan of God. They, they, they don't realize that they just put their whole Christian life on hold and if they don't connect to people but connect to a relationship with God, God would navigate them through those situations that they get involved in. 
Now listen, I'm not I'm preaching to the choir because I'm preaching something that was laid out by our late bishop, Bishop Hank Fur, somebody that was that was a uh, 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 discipling men and women in the Word of God, but but seeing men and women still fall away after us uh, doing 18 months in a program, 12 months in a program, and, and still falling away. And he say, God, what is it? And he said, You guys are good at preaching principles, but unless they cultivate a connection with me themselves, yeah. history will continue to repeat itself. Yeah. So it's really about cultivating a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, as the church grows, I won't be able to say hi to everybody. And listen, you can't get offended at that. Your relationship with the church got to be past me. It's got to be on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's got to be deeper than the pastor didn't say hi to me or the pastor didn't know. You got to get past all that foolishness and grow up into the things of God and say that I'm here for Jesus. I'm not here for no man. It's relationship that's going to cause things to fall in place. Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added into you. Being in order will cause your life to come into order. Chaos is an indicator that something is out of order in your life. Sometimes the enemy will use chaotic situations to get you out of order. Just stay in order and you will always come out on top. I notice when people, adversity comes in their life, it causes them to get out of order and then their life begins to fall apart. If they would just stay in order, stay coming to church, stay speaking to God, stay in the word, eventually their order will keep things in order in their lives. But so many people come unraveled at a little storm that the enemy throws at our life and we're willing to wait, walk away from our relationship with the Lord, willing to walk away from the church of Jesus Christ, and then, then listen, you know where you're going. You ain't seen nothing fall apart yet. It's about to really begin to fall apart when you step out of the covering of Almighty God. Question, why did God save you? Why did God save me? There are many reasons, but the number one reason was to restore the relationship that Adam lost in the Garden of Eden, where he walked and talked with the Lord in the cool of the day. God desires to be with you. Listen, he wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. Listen, and, and listen, him being on the outside was not good enough. God chose to live on the inside of you. You know how sometimes you can be around somebody, it's like, we need some space. <laughs> we need some space. Well, God don't want no space. He never gets tired of you. He never gets tired of you. He, he, he loves your singing. He loves your talking. He can deal with your moods. He can deal with your up and down. He can deal with your quirks. He can deal with the thing that your best friend can't deal with. He can deal with the thing that your wife can't deal with. He can deal with it all. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he wants to be in a relationship so bad that an outside relationship was not good enough. God chose to make you the tabernacle, the temple of the almighty God. He said, I'm not going to dwell in the temple made with man's hand. I want to dwell in the temple that I made, that I formed, that I blew the breath of life into. I want to dwell in that place. That's going to be my habitation. It's not even about this building. This, this is not a church until we come into it. Other than that, it's just a decorated warehouse. But listen, when we come as tabernacles of the church of Jesus Christ, it becomes a sanctuary, a, a, a place for believers to get together. And he says, where there's two or three gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. So God is desiring relationship. You know how you can tell a false prophet? A false prophet draws people to himself. Look at your name and say, thank God Pastor Tony ain't a false prophet. I'm drawing people to Jesus. Go to Jesus. I can't save you. 
I'm just his vessel. I'm just his mouthpiece. I'm just a cord plugged into the wall and flowing his, his juice. If you disconnect me from the source, it'll be empty words. But it's him, the one. Any good you see in me is emanating from my relationship with the person of Jesus Christ. Before Jesus, I was a dead man walking around. I was living, but I was really a dead man walking around. If I had died in that sinful state, I would have perished in hell for all eternity. And it's because of Jesus that I stand before you, blood washed, redeemed, full of the Holy Ghost, full of power and anointing. It's because of Jesus. So any good you see in me, it comes from him. He's so intimately involved with you. The Bible says that he knows the number of hairs on your head. Y'all comb your hair this morning? You know how some of the hair comes out in the comb? Guess what? He made an adjustment. He's that intimately involved. He just adjusted the count. And if you don't have hair, he still loves you. If you got a head wishing, a wishing head, he still loves you. He knows how many hairs you're wishing for. Go to Psalms 139. That wasn't in my notes, gentlemen, but just feel letter to the Lord to go there just to show how close he's involved with us. Psalms 139, let's look at verse 1. We're going to keep it moving. It says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and my uprising, and you understand my thought afar off. Before the thought hits your head, he already knows it's coming. Thou compass my path and my lying down, and you are acquainted with all my ways. Say, look at your neighbor say, there's nobody that knows you like the Lord. For there is not a word in my tongue, but, O Lord, you knowest it all together. Thou hast uh, beset me behind, and before you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Where, the show, where can I go from your spirit? Or where shall I go from your presence? If I ascend up into the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. You can't get away. <laughs> if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not thee, but you, your, the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you possess my reins, and you have covered me in my mother's womb. Look at your neighbor and say, he knew you in the womb. He knew you before the womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Let me stop right there. All y'all dealing with low self-esteem, get rid of that. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I don't care what words have been spoken over your life. I break the power of every negative word that tried to devalue or tell you that you were less than. I uproot that now in the name of Jesus. I declare that you are valuable to the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for you. And money and silver and gold was not enough to buy you back. So he shed his blood. You are valuable to the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care what man, what woman put some type of, of negativity on you. Shake that foolishness off. You got value. You may have did something, but you're not what you did. That does not define you. Even if you did it, that does not define you. I'm not what I did. That's not me. Fearfully and wonderfully made. My substance was not hid from you when I was made in secret. Curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Thy hands did see my substance 
yet being unperfect, and in thy book are all my members were written, which in continual fashion, even as yet, were none of them. God was involved at the time of conception and your development. God was, was, was in there working. How precious are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely you will slay the wicked. O God, depart from me, therefore, you bloody men. Such attention, such love, such concern demands a response. Let me say it again. Such love. Imagine somebody that was uh, play, paying close attention to you, that was really, I'm talking about really concerned about you and just wanted time to fellowship with you. Somebody that was protecting you your whole life. Some of y'all was protected from stuff you don't know. You're going to... When you get to heaven, you're going to find out some of the stuff that the Lord shielded you from, that the devil was trying to take you out before you got saved. And God stopped the hand of the enemy because he's that closely involved in your life. So that type of, of attention, that type of relationship demands a response. Or should I say a response is due for that. God has never let me down. Even when I made wrong turns, he was warning me the whole time. Don't do this. And I still did it, but he was a friend that still brought me back. God showed me early that he's no respecter of person. As a student in the faith home, he was sharing golden nuggets with me of his wisdom and his insight. And I didn't even realize it until I got out of the faith home and heard what some of the major mainline preachers were preaching and I said man that ain't the first time I heard that I heard that as a student in the faith home the Holy Spirit already taught me that Amen. and God started to show me I'm no respecter of person if you're hungry I will fill you if you're thirsty I will quench you if you ask for wisdom I will give it you just you're just somebody that access the relationship I think that made my time in the faith home, I don't want to say it was easy, it was, it was a challenge, but I, I think it would have been more difficult if I didn't have that relationship with the Lord. Let me show you. I remember one day being, uh, you, some of y'all heard this story, just, just uh, frustrated with this area. I said, man, I'm just tired of being here. And I remember I went to my room, I didn't even eat, and I went on to bed, nobody was there, and I'm like, Lord, I don't know if I can do this. I said, I don't, I don't know, Lord. I know you want me to do it. I know I heard from you, but I don't know if I can do it. All of a sudden, I began to hear the Holy Spirit. Tony, look back at how far I brought you from. Don't give up yet. Don't throw in the towel. I got a plan for you. This is just your mind, your will, and your emotions playing tricks on you. But, but, but look, and I began to think about where I was just a, a, a month earlier in a jail cell, not knowing what I was going to do with my life. But when they released me out of jail, I was about to be homeless on the streets of Tampa. And, and it was God that intervened, and he had to remind me that I've been working in your life. I've been working on your behalf. Do not forget. And it was that, that moment of that relationship that changed my mind. If he did not speak to me, I would have left. And that's what I'm saying. When you have a relationship with God, you can hit a rough spot. But you'll hear the voice of the good shepherd and the voice of a stranger you will not follow. And he'll tell you all is well. It may look like all hell is, is, is breaking out, but I hold the sun in my hands. I hold the stars. I cause the earth to spin on its axis. I cause the sea to stop at the border and, and to go back out into the ocean. Tony, I'm in control. And he got me through that. It was the relationship that got me through that. It has been my relationship with the Lord that has kept me when the structure was removed. You know, you come through a program or any type of controlled environment, and then it, people do good in that. 
Woo, good. But what's going to happen when the structure is removed? What's going to happen when, when uh, uh, the, the, um, nobody's telling you to get up and pray? What's going to happen when nobody's telling you to get in the word? What's going to happen when nobody's telling you to go to church? What's going to happen? Now you got to make the decision and you got to have a relationship strong enough to navigate you and have God put his own structure in your life through a relationship. I don't need a structure anymore. I needed it initially to help me to set a pattern in my life, but now I'm structure free. The structure now comes from, the, it's the structure of love. That's what it is. I'm under the structure of love. Love God and, and love your neighbor. But it's not, it's not forced. I don't need nobody to force. I don't need a whip. God is doing this. But it's through my relationship. Gentlemen, can you pull up John 15 in the Passion? If you got any, heard any message I preach, get this one. <laughs> get this one. But I like that faith stuff. Yeah, the faith stuff is good, but the minute you don't get the results and the timing that you think it should get, it's your relationship that's going to keep you in the race. Because sometimes you can have faith, but I don't know when it's going to happen. Pastor Ralph and Diane, they knew God was going to do it, but they didn't know when. So you need something to glue you to God, to the church, to the body of Christ, while you're waiting on the manifestation of your faith. And it's a relationship. I am the true sprouting vine, and, my, and the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. The words that I've spoken over you, you have, have already cleansed you. So you must remain in life union with me, for I remain in life union with you. Somebody say, it's two parts. See, he's in life union, but he said, you got to be in life union with me too. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. I am the sprouting vine and you're my branches. As you live in union with me, as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. If a person is separated from me, he is discarded. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. But if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire, and it will be done to you, for you. When, you're, when your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify my father. Look at your name and say, no connection, no, connection. no, fruit. no fruit. There are benefits that come with your union with Jesus. Your life will bear fruit and you will have something to show for your life in God. Somebody say something to show. Something to show. Now some of y'all, I'm going to say this. You've got to come to a point in your life where you get tired of having nothing to show. came here at the age of 25 and all I had to show for my life was a quarter to my name. No car, no license, busted up credit. Matter of fact, I had warrants out for me. I didn't know until after I got out. And everything I thought I built, the devil just came in and Matter of fact, it was, a, it was a cycle of that. Build it up. Get a little money. Stomach. Crazy. We'll just do a little drink here. A drink turns into a whole five-day party. And at the end, 
you have nothing to show for it. Jesus said, in your union with me, you can take it to the bank. When it's all said and done, you're going to have something to show for your life in me. Now, if you want to keep living a life with nothing to show, then disconnect. But if you want something to show for your life, then flow with me. This is the other thing the enemy does. You have a union with Jesus. You begin to get fruit. And then all of a sudden, you get high on yourself. You get prideful. Oh, nobody can't tell you nothing. To, can't tell you nothing because you got a thousand dollars. And and that you got you begin to get and, and uh, some little fruit, and then you get high on yourself, and nobody can't tell you what to do. Nobody can't correct you, and then you leave out with that little fruit. But you got disconnected from the vine. That fruit is like going to Publix, buying a bag of apples. Connected to Jesus is like owning an apple orchard. <laughs> I'm never running out of apples. But eventually that bag of apples that you got from Publix or Winn-Dixie or whatever your, the fruit market stand or wherever you got it from is eventually going to go bad or you're going to eat it all up. And to replenish your life, you got to be connected to Jesus. This is not rocket science. Listen to this. It's going to blow you all away. If I disconnect from Jesus, disconnect from the vine, disconnect, guess what's going to happen? I'm not going to be Pastor Tony no more. I'll be Pastor. I won't be walking in it. My, 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 my marriage is going to start getting crazy. My finances are going to start getting crazy. All the fruit that God has bought over the years will begin to vanish away. So it's not a matter of, 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 of I'm exempt from this. I'm, I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> and listen, the word of God is true for all of us. What's a thousand dollars? I mean, I mean, at least you're going to go crazy. Let it be a million, a thousand. Oh, we do that in an hour. We're done. You will have, your life will bear fruit and you will have something to show for your life in God. Fruit will stream from your life through this connection. And then he said, without him, you'll, you'll have a life with no power. Your connection to Jesus gives you power over the enemy, gives you power over, over temptation, gives you power over making the wrong decision. Disconnect from Jesus, you'll lose all your power. Right. I've been there, guys. Disconnect and stuff I used to basically say no to, I'm drinking. No power. Power. You need power to walk through this life, but it's going to come through your relationship with Jesus. Your prayers get answered when you're connected to Jesus. Your life will bring glory to God, and you will be a manifestation of the goodness of God. Anything or anyone that comes into your life to separate you from the Lord is a thief and a robber. I would not get no job that keeps me away from the Lord. I'd be like, devil's a liar. Y'all hire me because you like what Jesus done in me. And then I'm going to let this take me out, disconnect me from the vine. I'm going to end up losing this. You're better off staying connected to the vine and let him bring the right thing at the right time. Some of us are so anxious. If we would just wait on the Lord, he would bring the right thing at the right time. But we grab for the first thing. How many people know there's always an Ishmael before Isaac? You want me to tell you where the devil's going to attack you at? He's going to attack you to where there's a current lack in your life. Yeah. 
I want a wife. I want a wife. The devil hear that? Hmm. Okay. Sound a little impatient. Come on, Delilah. Get him. Everybody else getting married. I need to get married. Nah, nah. The devil just hearing that. Oh, man. This guy, he, he take anything. Get him. <laughs> Not knowing it's an assignment against your life, a hit squad that's been sent Amen. to take you out. Look at your name and say, why don't you just wait on the Lord? See, that, that's, that's, that's what a relationship will give you. It'll give you an inner contentment when you're waiting on Mrs. Wright. Matter of fact, the, the, the relationship will tell you, no, not that one. The Lord will rise up on the inside and say, no, son. He'll take away your peace. You'll start sweating. You'll start losing it. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I ain't supposed to be here. I got to go. God ain't giving me no peace with you. See you later. Actually, what he's doing, he's giving you a preview of what that marriage would be like. Anything or anyone that comes in your life to separate from the Lord is a thief and a robber. Sometimes the enemy will use even people that are close to us, not knowingly, they don't know this, trying to separate us from the thing that is causing production in our lives. Family members saying they don't take all that. Yeah, it does take all that. I need to be in the house of God. I need to be going there every week. Pastor Tone gave us Fridays off, but I need to be there uh, Sunday and uh, Wednesday. I need to be in the house of God. It's been producing in my life. Why would I stop doing a disconnect from what's been working in my life? Why would I, why would I take a stupid pill like that? Why would I listen to you? <laughs> Sometimes we listen to people that got no fruit in their lives or they tried to get it another way. You got to get it the way that God brought it to you and you know this is work in your life. Don't be like a Saul trying to put a different armor on you. David said, I can't use this. This has not been proven in my life. I got to use what's been proven in my life. Gentlemen, can you pull up Exodus 33? My God, where'd the time go? It must be a two-part. <laughs> we'll hit one more point. Okay, and it says, and Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp afar off from the camp and called the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out into the tabernacle of the congregation which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out into the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended, which is the Lord's presence, and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spoke unto Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Now this tabernacle was set up so people could leave the camp and go meet with the Lord. Sometimes you have to get out to get in. Notice this, though. The people watched Moses go meet with the Lord, and they worshipped from a distance. This is a picture of what the Lord does not want. He doesn't want you living off another man's relationship. He wants you to have your own relationship with him. Relationship was the secret to Joshua's and Moses' success 
they met with the Lord themselves and Joshua was not living off of Moses' relationship. He had his own relationship that he had built and it benefited him in the future because when it came time for him to lead, he knew what to do. Now, in Exodus 20, 19, the Bible says this. This will be the last point. Can y'all pull that up? It says, then they said to Moses, you speak to us and we will hear, but let not God speak to us lest we die. So these people were content with Moses speaking to them and didn't want to hear from God themselves. And I'm concerned that we're not developing a, a, a generation of believers that's content with just hearing YouTube videos or going to conferences or even coming just hearing the preacher preach on some, There's got to be something in your Christian experience where you hear the voice of God yourself. Now, I heard from God and I'm conveying what I heard from God, but there's got to be some that God is speaking to you in your own personal life that you can say, I heard from the Lord himself. Now, listen to this. They said, let's God speak to us and we die. For you to have a relation with the Lord, you got to die to yourself. You know why? Because when God begins to speak to you, sometimes he tells you something to do that's hard on your flesh. And you got to be dead to self to walk in this relationship. Cut that relationship out. Turn that off. Get that out of your life. And you got to die to self to be able to hear the voice of God. And a lot of people don't want to hear from God because they know he's going to begin to clean up their lives and get the stuff out of their life that's displeasing to God. So let just let Pastor Tony preach about faith. When God comes to a lot of us, he ain't talking about no faith. He's going to come to deal with you individually with stuff that's going on in your personal life, and he don't want to broadcast it. He's going to speak to you individually. But you got to be dead to self to receive the instructions of Almighty God. Let you, you speak to us. We don't want to hear from God lest we die. Look at your name and say, it's time, it's time. to die yeah. to yourself. Husbands, the Lord will clean your marriage up. Stop talking to your wife like that. Oh, y'all don't think God does this and involved in that? But some people have closed their, their ear off, inner ear off to the voice of God. But God will come right into your marriage come right into your child raising, come right into your job, come right into situation and speak to you directly. I don't want nobody straighten me out about talking to my wife. I like talking to her like that. Now, let me say this. You think you got away, you don't get away. Because when you stop hearing the voice of God, God's got a way of just stepping out the way. And letting an earthquake come to get your attention. Amen. Somebody say a shaking. shaking. His voice is the best way to hear it. You don't want a shaking. Amen. Because you'll be humbled in that. Amen. I'll stop right there. Hallelujah. Relationship, relationship, congregation, cultivate that relationship with the Lord. There's some more part, I'll probably I'll talk about it again. Um, and we'll talk about next time how to uh, cultivate it by finding that secret place with the Lord where you meet with the Lord yourself. Remember, Moses had to get away from the camp and he had to go meet with God. You're going to have to do that. You're going to have to break away from the schedule. Break away from the responsibilities. If you're too busy to meet with God, you're too busy. Amen? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah.
Amen. Before we close tonight, we always want to ask the question, is there anyone here, and you're here, and you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you're here, you have never accepted him, we would like to pray with you. Anybody? Amen. Anybody here that you serve the Lord and you, want, you haven't been walking with him and you want to rededicate your life back to the Lord? Raise your hand if you're here. Amen. I never want to get to heaven and God say, why didn't you? Right there? Come on up, my brother. Come on up. Man. Gotta ask. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You related to him? This is your son? Oh my God. Hallelujah. Something's been happening with his family. Um, the last few services, his family's been coming up, getting saved, giving their lives to the Lord. Remember what I said about order. When the man comes into order, everything else begins to get set in order. Amen. That's what it's about right there. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we'll dismiss now. Pray y'all out and just have a blessed uh, youth Sunday. Don't forget. Bring some kids out. Amen. It's going to be awesome. Amen. Let's lift our hands up to the Lord. Father, we just thank you right now, Father. We thank you for all that precious soul that gave his life to you, Father. Bless our brother, Father. Bless Saul and his whole family, Father. So you're, you're working there, Father. We thank you for it now. And Father God, um, let the word that came forth tonight, um, uh, uh, let it be sealed in the hearts of your people. Let, let this word uh, produce great fruit. Let it spark a hunger and a thirst for your people to come into your presence to seek you, Father God. And we thank you to take um, all of us to higher levels, Father God, as we um, uh, seek you first, Father. Father, we thank you for it now. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. Be blessed, people.